We tend to think of reactions as involving at least two things, like the blue and red balls shown on screen. We can also have one-dimensional reactions, but what does that even mean? In some sense, our blue balls are reacting with zero, so the number of blue balls will increase or decrease as a function of its current state. An example of a one-dimensional reaction is exponential growth. Let u equal the number of bacteria. Then, du dt equals alpha times u, where alpha is a positive real constant. We can solve this differential equation to get u of t equals u naught times e to the alpha t, where u naught is the initial number of bacteria. In real life, bacteria will reproduce via cell division. For some biological time step, the population of bacteria will increase approximately by a factor of 2. We let the initial concentration u naught to be 1 and alpha equal to log of 2. So this gives us the solution u of t equals 2 to the t. When we graph this, we see that the population of bacteria will increase exponentially. But we know that this doesn't happen in real life, because there are external factors such as nutrients, space, temperature, and interactions with other bacteria that come into play. For example, let us consider a two-dimensional predator-prey model known as a lotka volterra model. Here, u equals the number of prey, and v equals the number of predators, and the system is described by the equations on the screen. If we look at du dt, we notice that in the absence of predators, that is when v equals zero, the prey will increase exponentially. However, when predators are present, then we subtract the term uv that represents a predator eating its prey. On the other hand, the predator population will thrive when there is a lot of food around, so its population will increase when u is large. But when there is no prey, the predator population will decay exponentially. Shown here is a qualitative picture of the dynamics that arise with this particular system. We obtain a stable limit cycle where the populations of both species fluctuate, but are cyclic. As a result, we see that differential equations describing reactions can produce interesting behavior as in the Lotka-Volterra case, and are compelling to help describe phenomena in nature.